So I just finished Tommy Orange's There There, and right off the bat, let me say it lives up to the hype. This is an incredibly good read, and frankly, I'm relieved Indigenous writers could use a win. I mean, here in Canada, we're still reeling a little bit around the uh, accusations and questioning around Joseph Boyden's Indigenous heritage. Now, Joseph Boyden, the author I love, his three-day road about a World War I sniper was a great read, and Narenda is in my top five favorite books of all time. But Joseph Boyden, the person, over the course of his career, he's laid claim to Mi'kmaq heritage, as well as Nipmuc, Wendat, Ojibwa, uh, Métis, and Wasoxing, which is suspicious at best. But clearly, he's not some Willowdale white bro that's trying to cash in on indigenous signifiers. Here's someone who's rubbing elbows with the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and our true Canadian monarch Gord Downey. He's brought to light the issue of residential schools, no small feat in this distracted age. He shone a light on other Indigenous writers, including Lee Miracle, Thomas King, Richard Wagamese, and Edmund Wetmedetawabin. And for all the accusations otherwise, there are Indigenous groups that feel like he's earned his place within the circle. Surely, he's more than a pretendian, the Rachel Dolezal of uh, native authors, but others will argue that he's taking up space. He's scooped up prize money that could have served other indigenous writers. He's drawing focus away from other native voices, and he's taking up space sitting on panels, roundtables, and discussions. And he's speaking for a community without really being a part of that same community. And the problem is, is he keeps doubling down. He's not copying to any sense of appropriation or wrongdoing. It seems more like he's laying low, waiting for it to all blow over without once making clear who exactly he is. So maybe it's all been a slow burn, appropriation by degrees, starting with a decision to write a native-focused short story that won Boyden a ton of critical acclaim and attention and building a career out of that brick by brick. It's been one that's been very lucrative for Boyden. And the thing is, I don't want to dismiss Boyden, the author. He's an incredibly huge talent and uh, I think an incredible writer as well. But I wish he would come clean as far as indigenous roots or his lack thereof. But my digression, turns out we're all at least partly indigenous, at least according to Biogard Acumetrics, which is Canada's version of Ancestry.com. A reporter from CBC was getting a little suspicious because it seemed everyone was coming back with 20% indigenous blood, 20% being the bare minimum to get you a tax-exempt status card. So he swabbed his girlfriend's pet chihuahua, sent it in. Sure enough, Spike, 20% indigenous. Joseph Boyden has a loose connection to Tommy Orange as well. When it was first starting out, Joseph Boyden lent his name to the Institute of American Indian Arts, MFA program in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and taught there for a time as well. Tommy Orange, also a teacher currently at the Institute. And it was at the Institute with another fellow teacher, Sherman Alexi, who was one of the first people to blurb his book, saying, It is truly the first book to capture what it means to be an urban Indian, perhaps the first novel ever to celebrate and honor and elevate the joys and losses of urban Indians. You might think I'm exaggerating, but this book is so revolutionary, evolutionary, that Native American literature will never be the same. Unfortunately, you won't find that blurb on current editions. Sherman Alexie has recently been embroiled in some sexual harassment and misconduct charges, and as a result, Tommy Orange has asked for the blurb to be removed from subsequent editions. He's fine without it. There, there is deserving of all the hype and buzz surrounding the book. Tommy Orange is of Arapaho and Cheyenne tribes of Oklahoma, and this is debut delivers the goods. It is told from the perspective of 12 different narrators, and originally when I was reading this, I thought these were individual short stories. The first one blew me away, the second, third, more so. But then you start seeing the threads coming together and the linkages between the different stories, and you're seeing that they're all converging on this powwow that's going to happen in Oakland. Anyway, anything I say about this book is going to seem prescriptive. Now it's talking about the multifaceted experience of being native and blah, 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 but Forget about all that. Just pick up, read the book. Tommy Orange is one hell of a writer. This is one hell of a debut. I think this is like this year's homegoing. I mean, come for the grappling of difficult issues. Stay for the stellar writing. There, there. Tommy Orange, fantastic read. Well worth checking out. Also, the second Poptimus Discord book club voice chat is set for Saturday, August 25th at 4 p.m. Eastern Central Time. We'll be discussing The Good Sun. Come on by, join the conversation, or maybe lurk and listen. Whatever suits you, no pressure at all. It is a lot of fun, and we may even spend some time talking about The Good Sun. 
looking forward to it. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a great week of reading and we will talk to you soon. Bye.